Hi there, in this Anytype for Beginners video, I'll go over some basic terms and concepts. This is a preview lesson from a quick start course that I launched, which is in the video description below. First of all, we have our Anytype Vault, which we have just installed. I want to compare this to a house. The vault is locked and it has a key and same thing as a house. It's the largest container of all of your things. Now the next step down would be spaces. And these are essentially like rooms in your house. Right now you can have up to 50 different spaces and the number of spaces that are shared will depend on the membership level that you have subscribed to. So spaces are really important when we start collaborating with other people. You think about how you want to use your spaces. Are they going to be private for you? Are there some things that you're going to want to share with your family or your coworkers? Um, and does everyone need the same level of access? The next step down is an object. And an object, if you think about it, is like furniture within a room. So an object lives inside of a space and the space lives inside of your vault. Every object has a type. And if we think of this as the, the same way that we have our desktop file explorer, you can think of PDFs as an object type, Microsoft Word docs as an object type, images are an object type. Uh, basically, it's a first level category of whatever you have as items. With types, we have something called relations. Now, relations are called properties in other apps such as Notion, and they are just ways to describe your item again. So it could be a second level category. For example, if you first had books as a type, and if you wanted to have a relation to describe the book, you could start with fiction or nonfiction. And then you could go another step deeper and you could say, uh, within fiction, what type of fiction? Is it fantasy? Is it mystery? Just think of relations as ways to describe something. If you think of it in the way of a spreadsheet, you can think of it as the different columns that come after the first column of whatever it is that you're trying to track. Since everything is an object in any type, this means you can use an object as a relation, which functions just like a hyperlink. So in this example, each book is an object with its own page. The book category and book genre are just text values, but this new relation author is an object instead of just text, which makes it seem like a hyperlink. The next thing uh, that we want to briefly talk about is lists. So currently lists are split up into two different names. They're called sets and collections. Now collections are very similar to folders in that they are a grouping of objects and you are purposely adding objects to a collection. Now I say it's similar to a folder because it's not a container the way folders on your desktop are a container. So let's talk a little bit about your desktop. Let's say I have a file here uh, a Word document in the February folder. Technically, I can't have this file in both the February and March folders. They would have to be copies, right? Like the same, if I edited one file, the other one wouldn't get updated. However, that's not the case in any type, which makes it a really flexible system. So because collections are really just groupings, you can have an object be a part of multiple collections. Let's go back to that example. If I just have an object and I want it to be in both February and March, whichever uh, collection that I go to and I edit that object, it will be updated so that if I go into the March folder, it's already the same object. So this just has um, some other use cases that desktop folders can't offer you. Sets on the other hand are technically called a query. So what is a query? It's really just like a search, but for something very specific. It's just based on one single characteristic. So that could be, I want to look at anything that has been modified in the last week. You typically think of that as a filter and that's really what sets are for. They are pulling the information 
from your entire space and giving you the results in a list. You can also think of it kind of like a permanent search filter. So instead of using a keyword search, um, I might want to just look for uh, an object type that is poem. And so if I just have one set of poems, I can always go back to that saved filtered search. And finally, the graph view is the visual representation of all the objects in your space. It is similar to a spoke and wheel type mind map.